Market trend, our third and final step in tracking the big boys. The final step after manipulation is where the money is made, which is when the market begins to trend. The goal is to profit from the false break. You can do this by only trading after manipulation move or false push is clearly visible on your charts. And once this is achieved, you should have a valid stop hunt and a confirmation to confirm the trade entry. By correctly identifying which direction they have manipulated the market, we can understand which direction they intend to push the price to gives us a massive advantage. This is the easiest area for us to profit from, but only if we correctly identify the first two steps in the process. Now, I do understand this trading strategy is very different from anything you have been using. Realizing that there is a short-term manipulation of prices in the forex market and learning to read the intention behind the moves will take practice. And that goes for anything in life, basically. And anything that is new will take time to learn. Now, to grasp this concept to the fullest, you have to erase all the retail trader mentality and start to think like a big boy. I have been trading for more than five years and only started to be profitable in the last two years back. I was completely learning the wrong stuff and I didn't have the mindset of a winner. So I had to change the way I think in order to start seeing changes. And that is what you also need to do. There are a lot of traders out there that have been trading for more than 10 years but still don't make money. There is no duration for success in this industry. You need to understand that. Now this varies per person because some can start seeing results sooner or it can take you even longer than this. Remember, Forex is not a get rich quick scheme, right? Don't have such a mentality when it comes to Forex trading. If your strategy doesn't take into consideration the big boys that actually move the market, how can you expect it to produce consistent results? 90% of the retail trading strategies are available out there for free and they work like this. When the market goes up, your strategy will produce buying signals, right? And when the market falls, it will produce the sell signals. This makes you vulnerable to the big boys as they are doing the exact opposite. They are buying into the falling markets and they are selling the rallies. You have to know your place as a trader because the market can never be wrong. Technical analysis is based on the premise or idea that in order to know where the prices are going, one must know where the prices have been, which is the concept on which our trend lines and support and resistance levels are based on, right? So previous levels where the market has been or we've been uh, trying to break through or have been failing to break through. Knowing if a market is moving up or down helps us as investors to buy only those issues that have odds stacked in our favor. In all markets, the bottom line is that when demand is greater than supply, prices will rise. It is better to buy when demand is greater than supply than the other way around. Price action does not predict the way market moves. It is more about psychology and probability. Charts simply show the current situation and the analysis lays out the probabilities of various possible outcomes. Tools that allow investors to keep track of more opportunities and to see quickly when it is time to change the direction. These tools do not predict the market. They do not predict the future, but they are valuable in determining the probabilities of success whether deciding to buy or sell or even to just hold your positions. Within the trends of the bull and the bear market, prices can twist and turn into different types of patterns. The reason for all these patterns are all the same and that reason is fear and greed. The big boys are also people, so they have fear and greed, right? So another way to put it would be supply and demand. After a rally, demand is used up as people will have already bought in. Some will seek to lock in profits by selling and that will increase the supply. Now, combining the two, meaning supply and demand, prices will consolidate or decline. Depending on how fearful the people holding these positions are about losing money and how greedy they are about making that money, demand will increase and supply will decrease so that the prices can strengthen again. The depth of this decline is directly related to how aggressive the bulls and the bears are in their endeavor and it becomes a trail for the technical analysts to follow. Sometimes the clues are sub to and sometimes they are huge. It can be followed and matched up against similar patterns that have happened before. Once these patterns are classified, investors can prepare to follow typical paths unique to them once those patterns are fully formed. The average investor would rather book a small profit but will let a loss run and develop into a big loss. This is a very, very big mistake that you should avoid. Looking at the price action only, we should be able to still render at least a, a basic analysis of what is going on. There are some differences across time frames and across the markets, right? But the theories on which all analyses are based remain the same, no matter what time frame it is or what market it is. 
Markets repeat themselves in all degrees of scale, but the basic structures persist. When a market trends between support and resistance, that means buyers and sellers are adjusting their actions according to what they perceive as fair market value at that moment in time. At support, demand has increased to a point where it balances out supply just the opposite for resistance now these balance points are different at each levels the more times a market touches a support or resistance level the more important that level becomes in the minds of investors buyers and sellers become familiarized to acting in a certain way at each of these levels now that don't change and remain the same unless something happens that causes perceived value to change support and resistance levels will contain the market unless that perceived value changes so support and resistance levels are ingrained in the market's memory but the more recent these levels are the more impact they have in the current market be careful not to put too much weight on short term top and bottoms that formed a long time ago it has to make sense and not just be levels that happened in the past when analyzing the market over long term it is common to compare trends and price patterns at different price levels multiple time frames are important so top down analysis very very much key you need to keep in perspective to only focus on charts that are matching your investment horizon. We do this in order to avoid failing to spot changes in the major trend. It certainly would help knowing whether your short-term investment is in line with the long-term trend or not. Trade with the trend. I'm pretty sure you've heard this over and over again. Does your trade make sense in the larger scheme of things? I mean, if, if your trade is based on the one-minute time frame, uh, but that one-minute time frame is opposing what is happening on the 15-minute, on the H1, or the daily, you're probably going to end up losing the trade because the big boys focus on the, on the larger move, right? So they focus on the bigger time frames. So you, you need to ask yourself this question. Does your trade make sense? in the larger scheme of things if not then that means you need to watch your investments like a trader and be prepared to switch gears in a hurry most traders will agree that no market moves in one direction forever and that's a fact after a rally or a decline the market will pause as winners will take profits and losers cut out their losses and basically the second round of position will take place terms like correction consolidation and retracement are fairly interchangeable although some traders would argue that the shape of the patterns as they create distinguish them in most applications a correction takes place after significant change in accepted market value the correction shape and size is related to the move being corrected so that's basically everything that you need to know about the market trend so now the next step here we're going to jump into accumulation and distribution let's get straight into 